Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, this is a special edition of the Unprofessional Breakdown, and we have the one, the only, Jeremy, the inevitable, Williams. What's going on, man? Lou, good to be here. Thank you for coming. It's a pleasure. I've been looking forward to the Unprofessional <laughs> Breakdown for a while now, so let's this, get it rolling. And I've been wanting you on for a while, and, um, <laughs> but I want it to be different because I believe you're, you're a different kind of person. You know, you, uh, everything you do is um, well thought of. It, it may seem chaotic, but I don't believe it's chaotic. I believe you plan it, and it, you execute it, and it comes out perfect. Um, just like your weigh-ins. So talk to me about your weigh-ins. Like, how do you, you did the teeth thing, you did the injection thing. Yeah, the cigarette. You did the cigarette thing. Yeah. Like, what's, what, you know, as a former fighter, I am nervous through the whole thing. Like, I'm, I'm like, shit, I'm going to face <laughs> off with this guy that I've been training for for weeks, uh -huh. and I'm just, like, nothing but serious. Like, yeah. how, the, how the fuck do you come up with, with these, these antics, you know, the, the craziness? Sure. Yeah. The, the, the thing with the, the, the weigh-ins, the face-offs, is that, you know, I, I, I've been a fight fan for a long time, just like all of us, you yeah. know? We've been watching fights. We've been, you know, even back to WWE, you know, Stone Cold type <laughs> shit. So for me, it's a thing of I've been a viewer for so long that I'm like, uh, I, I, I want to be entertained. So it's almost like, uh, you know, creating a video game of sort, like I'm creating my own character. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is what I would want my created character to do. This is what I would want, you know, my favorite fighter to do. So so I, I go out there and I I I like to stack the the weight you know the hype behind the fight because it, it it's going to get more more people to watch it and and for me that 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 adds more to the fight so it's yeah it, it's worth it to bring to bring that extra energy in do you feel and you've gone viral plenty of times do you feel that whenever you do these these things for weigh-ins you feel like there's like pressure on your shoulders like now you have to perform at your absolute best because we're in a day and age where you could be the greatest fighter in the world but boom you lose that's it. They yeah. turn on you. Yep. The, the media, the, the, the people out there, they turn mm -hmm. on your ass and you suck all of a sudden. Like, yep. So do you feel like there's a lot of pressure on you whenever you do these things during the weigh-ins? We all know MMA is a, a, a vicious game. You know, uh, We see guys go 10-0, 11-0 type shit, and then you know, he loses one or two, and people are like, oh, he fell off, whatever. So that kind of stuff I, I really don't think about. W what I do think about is I know the work I put in. I, I, I know I'm in here day in, day out, multiple times a day, doing whatever I can to make sure that when it's time to perform, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be busting my nut, you know, as full as I can. So <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm really not worried about maximizing the moment because I know the work that I put in will pay dividends. And we, we, we've seen through my amateur career the, the examples of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I'm excited to go into my, my pro career knowing that, uh, I, I've been tried and tested. Nice, man. It's beautiful. It was a windy day here in Florida. We're in uh, Jeremy's backyard here. First time ever I step out of either my studio at home or my um, Skype interview via the phones. And, and, breaking. and I'm doing something special. So if the, it's windy, but it's beautiful. So if the audio is a little jacked up. I'm trying my best to fix it because I do it on my own time. If you don't like it, go suck your mother. So, um, <laughs> so the name Inevitable, how did that... Like, how did that come about? I'm, I'm real curious of fighters and their nicknames and how they get their, their nicknames. So, Inevitable, yeah, what was that? Absolutely. Well, you know, when I started this journey, um, everyone always told me, and I'm sure other fighters have heard this too, your coach should give you your nickname, a teammate should give you your nickname, and I think that's a crock of shit. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I think you should ride with the nickname that goes best with, with you as, as a person and, and a fighter. And to me... Inevitable feels like me, you know, mm -hmm. like I feel like making it to the UFC, breaching into the next level, uh, causing problems for problems it is inevitable. So when, when I when I think about the word, I think about me and, and what I will present to the, the fight community by, by the end of my career. You hear that as a fighter, the coach got to give you your nickname and, and all that. But when you put it in that perspective, it's it's it tells us how much you believe in yourself. And it's different than being arrogant. It's different than being cocky. Or some may call it cockiness. Some may call it arrogance. But if you truly believe in yourself like you're supposed to, because in a fight, when you choose these fights, you choose them not because 
it's easy or, or a hard matchup or whatever. You choose because you truly believe that you can whoop this cat. Well, the, uh, this is the thing about fighting, all right? This is the thing about MMA. It's like, you know, uh, we step into MMA knowing that we are, we are fighters, but we should be able to, to fight anybody, be, be mentally, physically prepared to fight anybody. So it's like you see some guys go like, oh, I want an easy fight or, you know, I, I don't want to fight that guy. And I, I think that's just, just such a pussy mentality. For me, you know, think about uh, doctors, lawyers, pretty much a- a- any any uh, major career that, that that people go through. They're fighting daily to get a spot at wealth, notoriety, you know, all, all the above. The MMA scene is, is nothing different from that. So as I, as I step into this world uh, as a fighter, I don't go, I'm going to fight these guys, but not that guy. Like I, I'm, I'm mentally and physically prepared to fight literally anybody who who I meet and, and step across, you know, in, in my path. That's uh, again well put. And this day and age, with the amateur scene now, and even the local fight scene, you see a lot of cats pull out of fights. One reason or another. Sometimes they have good reasons. Sometimes they don't, or whatever the case. I've seen a lot of crazy stuff being a part of combat night. Um, before it was rare that somebody would pull out, right? But now you just never know. So you're you you may have an opponent, but you're really training the training. At the end of the day, you don't give a fuck. Twenty four hours notice, yeah, one facts. hour notice. You're willing to fight whoever steps in there because that's how you're properly training, right? I you know I tell you what I think back to um, it's like my second or third fight. I was training to fight this kid and he pulls out, and my coaches come to me and they're like, hey, like uh come at night gave you a a new matchup like are are you okay with this and I'm kind of looking at the look in their eyes like why are you looking at me like my answer is pending like whoever it is where I have to fight I'm fighting you know what I mean so to me the thought of oh I can only fight this guy or that guy like no 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 man when 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 you sign to fight when when you agree to fight it could be a wrestler it could be a striker it could be a fucking nerd i don't know it could be anybody bro get in <laughs> yeah, there yeah. and get, and and get the job done no, no matter who it is i like it man i like it well it's windy gonna blow away headbands you can find them where inevitable. you can find these headbands at uh inevitablyfit.com and they got Shout coffee out. mugs it got shirts it got everything we'll have more to come we'll have uh brand new shirts for this fight as well um thank you for those who have been supporting and thank you to those who will support inevitablyfit.com quick plug there just because you know we got to take advantage of what happens now you know with the windiness and all that so you went 5 and 0 in MMA as an amateur um when i got here you were like what what should i put some stuff on the table i'm like yo go get that combat night title and he go and, and he says to me he's like don't you think you know i should put that in the past cuz i'm going pro right now um and i'm like no bro that's an accomplishment you got that so you went 5 and 0 uh MMA you had a couple kickboxing bouts or muay thai yeah. amateur yep Across the world, I think you fought in uh, Mexico yeah, one time. Yeah, fought in Tulum. And um, KO. So you end your amateur career with the title. Mm-hmm. I never got this, you know. Um, I never got that. How does it feel for you to be a combat night champion? Close the book on that um, amateur career, and now you're going to embark in a new journey. You're starting all over again as yeah. a professional. Um, I tell you what, as an amateur, the the title feels good. It felt good to throw it over my dad's shoulder. It felt good to look up in the crowd and say, okay, like, you know, uh, I've got the belt, this and that, but I don't want that to hold me down. Like, I've seen other fighters. Again, I've been a fan of the scene for a a long time, so I've been able to watch guys and learn from them from the background. So now that I'm in the forefront and it's happening to me, I'm able to kind of use what happened to them, uh, you know, their experiences as my own and and learn from it. So... When I, when I won this title, it was like, okay, it's a cool Instagram flex. I'll hang it on my wall. That's it. That's the last I think about it. Like, I'm not going to let this poison my work ethic. Like, I get back into the fucking gym, and I'm the little bitch I was on day one, you know, and that's that. And I, I see some guys walk around, they think their their dick's like fucking four feet long, and it's just, you know, good for you. But 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 for me, I have to stay in the trenches. Otherwise, you know, I'll, I'll look... Uh, I'll fall behind, and I just fucking refuse to to fall behind. So you're not settling, basically, is what you're telling me. You're not settling for this. Yeah, it's a great accolade, right? You put it in the past, but you're fucking trucking forward. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's um one way to put it. I never heard anybody explain it like that, 
Um, although many of us has thought of it, but it's a good way to put it, you yeah, know, absolutely. moving forward. So speaking of you put it into work in the gym and I'm seeing you're working, you're out there, but you represent Jungle MMA. Shout out Mike Lee, my dog. Shout out Mike Lee. Good coach. But I've noticed that you're branching out. You're going yeah. over to different yeah. places. Absolutely. Orlando Muay Thai, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Orlando City Muay Thai. Shout Orlando, out Trent Orlando Collin. City Muay Thai. Uh, you're over at Fusion. Shout out Julian Williams. All these gyms that you're going to. Mm -hmm. um, in the scene, you know, you hear about, oh, there's beef, you know, this gym versus this gym, mm -hmm. that gym versus that gym. Eventually, small, we all fight each other. Yeah. Um, all the gyms fight each other. But something about Orlando, I don't think there's real, like, an actual beef beef. I think there's, like, competitiveness, of course, because we yeah. have to be. Yep. But um, the fact that you're training at, you know, Jungle's a prominent gym. Fusion is a prominent gym. Yeah. Uh, Orlando City Muay Thai is, like, on the rise. On yeah, the rise yeah, as absolutely. far as striking, man. Absolutely, yep. Like, you know, you spoke to your coaches about that, and yep. they have no issues with it. So shout out to um, Mike Lee, Julian, and all your coaches, man. Yeah, I dig uh, that. Also shout out Ace MMA, uh, Ace Tiago, MMA, Tiago. Uh, Dominguez. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm getting around. Um, one thing I have learned through my amateur career is lo loyalty is a good thing. It's good to have people, who, you know, in your corner who have your back. But I'm also looking at this, you know, just like we're talking about the title. Uh, I'm thinking about the next, 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 next step. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when I'm fighting some motherfucker from Brazil, it's not going to matter, you know, regionally, what, 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 whatever, who has issues with who. Like, I kind of don't give a fuck. Like, I, for me, it's just about training with the best of the best. And, you know, uh, for example, like, you know, uh, three out of my five MMA fights were against Fusion guys. It's supposed to be four of them, but, you know, he, neither here nor there. Um, so, you know, people go like, you know, how could you go to a gym that you fought so much at? Mm -hmm. And I had wars with some of those guys. Like, so it, it paid dividends to just know that these guys are animals and I want to train with, I want to get, I want to get my hands into all the pots that I feel like locally are, uh, strong, you know, uh, and and from there, be able to to use what I can to just fucking slingshot myself to the top, you know? Because mm -hmm. if I don't, then what else is the point of all this? What's the fucking point of, of all this effort I'm putting in if I'm not going to climb into Dana White, Sean Shelby's pockets, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and reach the world. So that's that's my goal. And for those who see it likewise, thank you and who understand. And for those who don't, you know, suck one off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Suck your mother. Yo, Como. so your pro debut is happening March 24th. Third. 23rd. March 23rd, Osceola Heritage Park. I'm, I'm totally unprofessional. Get, uh, get your tickets on Ticketmaster. You can choose your section and all. There you go. It's going to be in a new venue um, in Orlando. You're going pro. Are you worried about going five rounds? Uh, no, not five rounds. Five minutes? Five minutes, yeah. Versus I, three minutes on the amateur? I tell you what. Um... The amateur is such a good realm, and, you know, you, you, you get your feet in the water. You, you get your three minutes in, you know, but five minutes, you can really break a motherfucker, you know? Somebody's soul kind of leaves the body in the, in, in the middle of the fight, and you feel that. Five minutes is a, is a great way to explore that. So, yeah. if anything, I'm looking at this as open doors, more opportunities for me to exploit and just fucking grow as, as a person and a fighter. And um, I'm, I'm excited to prove to the fans, the haters, and myself that I am who I say I am, you know, and, 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 and who I'm meant to be. And um, just, just, just watch and see. Speaking about who you're meant to be, I want you to look, and I want you to tell them who is Jeremy Williams. Jeremy Williams is a a small kid who was fucking picked on a lot, who dug through the trenches to find uh, redemption, find find myself. So, just like many other fighters, we we've all got things to fight through, and you know, people say, "What what what traumatic thing happened to you? You know, did did you did your did your dad die, or did did you get jumped, or I don't know, some some shit like that? What happened to you is traumatic for you to be fighting." It's not so much that my life was traumatic. 
it was more so that the the more I grew up, the more I found that if I didn't make a pave a way for myself, then someone else would pave my way for me. And there there comes a time where you know I thought, fuck this, you know I I I'm gonna do what I want to do my way, no matter what. And you know, day one fighting wise was uh interesting because I. I'm coming into this with a lot of questions, Mm -hmm. you know, and now we're at the point where I've proven to myself and others that um, this dream can come uh, become a reality. So for me, uh, moving into pro is just another way to uh, maximize this. And we're going to grow from uh, from from everything amazing that we've seen from my amateur career. I dig it. And I uh, want to say thank you for inviting me over. Um, beautiful home, beautiful pool. Had to be different. You're different. You're, uh, you're very different. So it has to be different with the unprofessional breakdown. It's probably going to get other fighters um, jealous. But if they're watching this, <laughs> hey, I'm down to do whatever. You know what I mean? So uh, just let, yeah. well, not whatever. But just let me know what's up. Any shout outs to sponsors, past sponsors, future sponsors. You know, I, uh, Lou, thanks, thanks for coming over again. This I've been, I've been wanting to get on the show for a long time now. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of the, the scene, the community. So, uh, again, I've been watching others and kind of learning. But uh, wh- what I've seen is um, there are others who try to imitate, and imitation is still imitation. And this is, this is, this is the original. So, uh, w- watch and see what happens here as we propel. But for me, as a pro, my, my sponsors are. Uh, Oceans and Ale, Die Happy, um, Florida Spear, Crew Howl, uh, Back at Home, uh, 757 Virginia. I've got uh, the Whirlies HVAC and um, Cryer Concrete. Boom. There we are. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. And uh, just know, hang on tight because this rocket ship is going to start flying real soon. There you go, guys. This is going to be out. And thanks for tuning in. Come on.